this Tuesday, February 2nd, 2016. It is now 4.30, and if you could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence after. On the commissioners? Here. 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 Uh, for the record, all five are present. Okay, number three, declaration of conflict of interest. Okay, number four, communications. Five uh, minutes for January 19, 2016. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes uh, for the Redevelopment Commission meeting for January 19, 2016. <coughs> I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second for the minutes of January 19, 2016. Is there any corrections or additions to these minutes? Okay, roll call in the minutes, please. Soto Presley? Yes. Kasperke? Yes. Naveja? Yes. Myrick? Yes. Hopper? Yes. Uh, motion passes. Five yes. Okay, number six, our homebound conditionable forgivable loan approval. Uh, looks like we have three applicants. We only have one. I had two withdraw from the program, Kenneth Rowland. And uh, Madi Luna, they had to both withdraw from the program. Lorraine is here, though. Lorraine, you want to come up? Okay. Have Lorraine come up. How are you, Lorraine? Hi, how are you? Good. So, Lorraine, tell us how you heard about the program. Actually, um, it was through the realtor. They actually, when they advertise the houses and they put them up, they sell right underneath there, it says the Hammond Homebound Program. Okay. But also with a co-worker where I work at, at the hospital, she said that she actually went through this as well. So it was both ways. Okay, ways yeah. Yeah. What, what real estate company or agent? I'm going through Remax. Remax, so uh -huh. adver they advertise it direct in the, in the listing? Oh yeah, yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Ms. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve the homebound conditional forgivable loan approval for Ms. Lorraine Silva. Yes. For 6630 Rhode Island Street in Hammond. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for the homebound conditional loan forgivable loan approval for Lorraine Silva at 6630 Rhode Island. If there's no further discussion, then roll call, please. Presley? Yes. Kasperke? Yes. Naveha? Yes. Myrick? Yes. Hoffert? Yes. Motion passes. Five yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you very much to all of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to move to uh, number seven. Uh, it's going to be a public hearing for the 2016 dash 2017 annual action plan. Public hearing is now open. Public hearing is now open. Public hearing is now open. You have three minutes if anyone would like to come forward and speak. Excuse me, public hearing is limited to a time? Never known that. Public comment, perhaps, but not public hearing. <laughs> go ahead with your comment. Excuse me? You can go ahead with your comment. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> My name is Carlotta <clears throat> Blake King, a uh, Hammond resident, 1004 Highland Street, homeowner, mother, advocate for kids, entrepreneur, and a licensed associate broker <clears throat> here, in, <clears throat> here in the region. Um, I had the opportunity of reading the uh, public hearing notice for the 2016 City of Hammond Action Plan 
and I'm here to voice some of my concerns. To begin with, uh, when I read the notice, it, it lacked a phone number or even an email address as to who do you contact to make an appointment to actually see the uh, plan. <clears throat> and secondly, I was surprised that it's not on, on gohammond.com as it has been in previous years for review, you know, for obvious reasons, senior citizens who don't want to come to a meeting or handicapped people or what, handicapped persons or what have you. I would hope that in the future that we would use uh, the simple mechanism, the website, the senior Hammond website to put it on for review. <clears throat> And it's my understanding too that uh, HUD has an exchange link that allows cities to place the uh, action plan online for that very purpose. So I hope in the future that we would uh, again use that HUD link that is there for accessibility for residents like myself. <clears throat> uh, thanks to Mrs. Mabry for accommodating me with an appointment today to review the action plan. Uh, in reviewing the plan, I noticed there was no index, uh, pages were not numbered, and as you went from section to section, it, there was no divider, so you didn't know you were going from one different section to another, a, a piece of color sheet of paper or something perhaps could have facilitated that. <clears throat> and then I noticed after reviewing all the, uh, the 22 budget items, there was no amount. So in reading the budget, I don't know what the actual dollar amount is at the taxpayer, and I think that should be very, you know, part of, of, a, of your plan to see the actual dollar amount that this budget calls for. Currently, I have some concerns for the following agencies. Uh, the Big Brothers, Big Sisters Project, uh, uh, according to the budget, if I'm reading it correctly, uh, they were <clears throat> $10,000, of which $7,000 was for salaries. I didn't understand that. Uh, see our work, youth bill, I would, know, I would like to know as a taxpayer, an advocate for youth of what, a, what specific project they've actually done in the city for a budget of $60,000. <clears> and uh, regarding the, the homeless outreach, yes, and G, and other uh, budgeted items that, that dealt with homelessness, I, uh, I noticed there was no mention of the Northwest Indiana Continuum of Care Network, Region 1, that uh, there was no budget set aside for that agency, and this particular agency sits on several review boards on the state level to make sure that our cities receive ESG dollars, homeless dollars for shelters. Uh, they sit on boards to, to determine how do we go about getting new shelters and other agencies that uh, address the homeless issues within LA County. And uh, I would hope in the future that the COC would be budgeted in this action plan because they actually offer a, uh, a service that it could, could be an administrative cost to the city of Hammond. And we also know that our consolidated plan has to be written off by the COC, so it's only fair that since other cities contribute to um, their funding, I don't know why city of Hammond does not. Uh, we care for the heart. I didn't understand the request of $101,099, but it was budgeted for, there was a budgeted item for $20,000. Uh, I don't understand why they would get any money when, when they offer their services to any seniors that Medicare or Medicaid is, um, they get their funding from that for any seniors that they assist. Uh, they are reimbursed through uh, Medicaid or Medicare, so I don't understand that as well. <clears throat> the Chodo, you and I seem to have rehabbed more homes in other parts of the city as opposed to the second and third district. Um, I find that troubling. Of the citywide youth programs, the number of youth decreased by 28 students. I know it doesn't seem like a lot of students, but realizing the need for services for our young people, why was the decrease? I mean, I, I didn't understand that. And some of the agencies, departments didn't seem to provide all of the documents such as board members, board members and, and budgets. I, I don't know what's required. Some had to provide that information and others didn't. So I, I would think there would be some kind of consistency or continuity through all of, all of that. <clears throat> After reviewing the plan as a citizen of Hammond, uh, and I do live in the third district, I see it as a plan. However, when you, when you go through pieces and pieces of paper, you can't, you can't envision what these dollars are actually doing, especially for where I live in the third district. Um, when I sit on my sun porch and look out over my community or drive through my community, I don't see a lot of development in the last 12 years. 
I see vacant, blighted uh, neighborhoods after neighborhoods. Uh, property that's been demoed and nothing in its has been seen to be any replacement for there. <clears throat> And uh, one of the major communities that we've talked about over years and years, Jacob Square, still nothing, no development. I mean, it's a spit throw from downtown Hammond. And we've always talked about developing the downtown Hammond and you have foot traffic from that very community that could, could certainly uh, utilize any service that once the downtown is completed. I don't understand why Jacob Square has had no, absolutely no development, but yet we have over 500 page action plan that don't seem to include them. And finally, I've had the opportunity to read the CDBG national objectives, and I'm concerned that the commission is not meeting these objectives when it comes to our weakest communities. As we know, uh, the second and third district happens to be our weakest community. And it's often said that the city is only as strong as its weakest link. In the third and second district, we have to admit it, but is our weakest link. And again, as a licensed associate broker, uh, resale of properties within these communities. I don't see it. It's very hard. Sellers who are owners who are keeping up their property and maintaining it are not getting any value because of the blight around them and it's not fair to them. So there has to be a plan for these folks who, who, who tend to remain living in the second and third district and upkeep their homes and do the best they can, you know, for curb appeal and all of that. You have to protect their interest. Uh, and their investment, and, and I just don't see that happening. If it is, I just don't see it. And in those sheets of paper, it, it just does not, it's not a glaring comment to me. Uh, these are my comments, and I will be submitting them in, in writing uh, to the executive director and to HUD as well. Thank you for listening. Thank you. else like to come forward? Okay, then uh, public hearing for 2016-2017 annual action plan is now closed. Approval of sale and buyer of NSP property located at 7038 Lyman Avenue. <coughs> Mr. President, commissioners, uh, you should have a handout requesting approval for the sale of an NSP property located at 7038 Lyman Avenue uh, to Juliana M. Cazares uh, as the primary resident of that property and as a non-occupant co-borrower, her father, Brandon Peterson, uh, purchase price of which is $116,500. Juliana, Ms. Cazares is here. <laughs> okay. Is there any, uh, the co-borrower, does that, does that <coughs> take us out of bounds anywhere in the sale of this? Is that, that's no. A, Standard no. operating or within it's, standard operating procedures? It's standard operating with uh, uh, an FHA loan or a HUD loan, uh, an NSP property. And what we've done, what, what that does is it allows a lower income person who has a co-signer, if you will, that's not going to live in the property, uh, allow them to buy a property. So what Mr. P it, it, uh, I'm sure Mr. Myrick yeah, We talked about it earlier. Uh -huh. Uh, so will Mr. Peterson be on title, contract title and D? Yes. He will. Okay. So in the future, she could probably refinance out and take him off. Yes. Okay. At some time in the future when, future. when the income meet, it, it's a matter of uh, meeting the lender's um, debt, to, debt to income ratios. Sometimes uh, a, a car payment or a, some type of payment might knock them over a certain percentage that's allowable. So last for a cold hour to come in. HUD's very understanding. We've done that in the past with NSP. Jennifer has done it with the uh, down payment assistance program as well. So. Right. Uh, actually, Commissioner Kirk, we were just speaking about this. I was telling her I have, a, as, a, as a listing agent, I have a situation similar to this, so I, I definitely understand it. Um, 
we were talking about bridge loans and all this kind of stuff, which doesn't affect this, but you know, we definitely understand what's going on here. That you know, it's not that she's a credit risk. You know, she just didn't quite have the income. Yeah. Yeah, as long as it's not a red flag on the the actual. No. Problem, I just <laughs> the, the lenders are familiar enough with the program where they have affidavits on file where we'll have uh, Brandon Peterson, her father, sign an affidavit saying that he will not occupy the residence. He does, he, he does live at 7137 Magoom. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be my next question. <laughs> okay, thanks for answering it for me. Okay, I don't know how else came out very, very nice too, Dennis. I did drive by it. You think so too. How many houses did you look at, Juliana? We didn't want one when it said because it had no basement. I really said that you have to look at it, come look at it. And then I walked in and I said, It's this one. <laughs> this is in the fourth district, isn't it? Not the third. It borders. Yeah, it's fourth. It's the fourth. Okay. Yeah. I you know, it just made me think about, you know, what Ms. Blake King was stating about about the, oh here's a property, but it's not in the third, it's in the fourth. Okay. Anybody any other questions? I have no problem with it. So, Mr. President, I move we approve uh, the sale and buyer of NSP property located at 7038 Lyman Avenue. I second that. We have a motion and a second for the approval of sale and buyer of NSP property located at 7038 Lyman Avenue. Julianne M. Cesaris, thank you. <laughs> at 7038 Lyman. We have a roll call then, please. Total Presley? Yes. Ed Ricky? Yes. Nevada? Yes. Myrick? Yes. Hopper? Yes. Motion passes. Five yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you very much. Number nine, approval of Dennis Radowski to sign documents relating to the sale and closing for the NSP property at 7038 Lyman Avenue. Commissioners, uh, this is not too much different than what we've done in the past. For the closing of the property, we're asking that Dennis could sign on behalf of the uh, Redevelopment Commission. I do have a question. I don't understand why every time this comes up, we have to have him have to approve him as a signatory. Why he just cannot be the signatory of record? You know, like both everywhere else does it. With with the NSP properties you're you're talking about. Yeah. There might be a way. Actually, maybe Dave and I can sit down and have a discussion on that. How to how to make sure we do it properly and legally. Um, I don't know if Dave wants to chime in. You, you have passed a resolution every year that allows Phil to sign on behalf of the Redevelopment Commission. It's one of the first things you do every year. Mm -hmm. But because Dennis is technically employed by United Neighborhoods, Inc., and there's a limited number of properties, I mean, Phil's dealing with much, okay. no offense, I Dennis. I just, Phil's dealing with more, so, you know, we've done it on a case-by-case. -case. We could come up with a resolution that gives him the blanket authority, but I sort of thought, you know, I mean, it's, Part and parcel to when you approve the the sale, so it's just. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I'm fine with that. I just, it just, I always wonder, you know, why do we do this every time? But now it makes sense because. Right. I, understand. Okay. Transparency and right. I mean, it's just another mo a second motion. It's probably a better idea to keep it this way. Okay, I see. It's just a question. <clears throat> See it on the agenda myself. Okay. Well, if we have Mr. President, I move that we have uh, <coughs> Mr. Radowski to continue to come to our meetings for each property, and also that I to approve the uh, approval of Mr. Radowski to sign documents relating to the sale and closing for the NSP property at 7038 Lyman. Second. Motion and a second for the approval of Dennis Radowski to sign documents relating to the sale and closing for the NSP property located at 7038 Lyman Avenue. There's no more discussion. Roll call, please. Total Presley? Yes. Ed Ricky? Yes. Nevada? Yes. Myrick? Yes. Hopper? Yes. Motion passes. Five yes. Number uh, 10.
10 uh, uh, reports. Uh, Mr. Bill Tylen, would you like to share anything? Sure. Good evening. Um, have some announcements for sure. Uh, today at 2 o'clock, we had the grand opening of a, a new construction, new constructed, well, I should say repurposed building um, with additions at Calumet and Michigan Avenue, which I believe is either the second or third district. I'll have to check that. Um, new technology based company, uh, Tri State, which creates robots. Um, repairs robots and trains people on how to work on robots. It created uh, 35 jobs with an average salary of $55,000. It's very exciting. They work very closely with the with Purdue University Calumet and their new technology center, which is on Indianapolis Boulevard. The owner of this company, Don Keller, also owns Tri-State Industries on Columbia Avenue. Um, we had a great grand opening today, huge turnout. Um, very exciting, and at this grand opening, he announced that they have a rendition of the phase two at this site, which is a 70,000 square foot facility, where they're going to have uh, even more of the same of what we just what I just mentioned, uh, and obviously that will create many more jobs. So it's very exciting. We're, we, um, you know, if you haven't had a chance, the owner basically welcomed anybody at any time to come view the property, have a walkthrough of it. Um, and I can't remember what, if any, anybody was able to attend today if I didn't see you. I apologize. We're, I had to run out pretty quick because Dave and I had a meeting at 3 o'clock, but it, it went very well. Also, this Friday um, is the grand opening of the 18th Street Brewery in downtown Hammond, which I believe is, is also the 3rd District. Um, this has been a long time coming. We've been working on this project for quite a while. Um, obviously, 18th Street Brewery started off in Gary, and they're going to remain in Gary and keep their brew pub open. But they took an existing building, renovated it. I don't know the exact size of it off the top of my head, um, but it's very exciting what they're doing. Uh, at, I believe it's Douglas and Osborne. Uh, the owner, Drew Fox, is known nationally for what he's created in Gary. And I think there's a lot of excitement about this grand opening. So that's Friday, this Friday they're opening. Unless something changes, it's going to be open to the public. And uh, I hope you get a chance to go visit. It should be fun. So, so Gary will stay open, but the majority of the brewing will happen here, or the, the, uh, the process? All the manufacturing will be in Hammond now. The brew pub will remain open in Gary, and actually... Um, a partner of his opened up uh, another uh, smaller restaurant in Gary right next to his brew pub. But all manufacturing will be done in Hammond. Shop. Yes, correct. But they have, yeah, and they do some, some other um, food items that are, it's pretty cool. I don't remember off the top of my head exactly what they're serving, but it's chef-driven type food items. And I think uh, so far it's, they had a huge article in the paper. It's been pretty exciting for Gary. But all manufacturing would be. I was there Sunday to get a cup of coffee. I don't mean to interrupt. Sure. But they, they tr I, I had like a cinnamon roll that was all that left. They sold out of everything in the building. So whatever, it was a, it was a good sign. It's a very good sign. And like I said, Drew Fox has created a reputation for himself that uh, uh, is nationally known. Um, so all manufacturing will be in Hammond. All new bottle releases for 18th Street Brewery will take place in Hammond which is very exciting because you draw, it's, it's a huge economic development um, ordeal when, when you have, you know, a thousand people coming in to get a new bottle that, that he just created and, and is selling it at the Hammond location. So it's going to do a lot for that area. We're very excited about that. I don't know the exact amount of employees, but uh, I'll find that out. And obviously, if you get a chance, stop in, talk to the owners, talk to some of the, the workers there, and they'll share the information with you. I don't know the exact address, but it's the cross street is Douglas and Osborne. Oakley. I'm sorry, Oakley. Thank you. Douglas and Oakley. And the building itself is adjacent to the police department property. So if you know where the police headquarters are, there's a parking lot just west of the, the police station that the police obviously maintain. And then this building is adjacent to that parking lot. So it's very exciting. On February 12th, which is Friday, will be the grand opening for Byway Brewery, which is at Oxbow Landing, 8094 in Kennedy. Um, 
very similar to what I just told you, except the difference is this is a brand new brewery. This is their first location. Um, the gentleman that owns it, Mr. Toth, um, has been in business for many, many years and been very successful. And uh, he wanted to take this on and, and have the new vet next venture in his life. So he, he constructed this building and, and opened this brewery. And again, February 12th, it'll be open to the public. So I, I hope you get a chance to go and uh, show support for this new Hammond company. Besides that, I'll be happy to take any questions you might have. Good, good stuff. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, Phil. Will both those breweries, I know it's not your event, be represented at the uh, 219 Fest? I believe they are. Um, I'm not, I am, what I, I'm running the beanbag tournament at the 219 Fest. I saw craft beer on the thing. Yeah, so that's the only thing I really have a grasp on right now, but I heard them mention the 219 event, and I believe they said both 18th Street and Byway will be represented. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the register of claims for January 13, 2016 through January 28, 2016. Claims R52865 through R52942. Is there any questions or discussion on these claims? Yes. Myrick? Yes. Hoffert? Yes. Motion passes. Five yes. Okay, number 12, uh, new and unfinished business. Commissioners, we do have new business. Um, we received this today, which is why you're receiving it today. Uh, an agreement to purchase real estate uh, at the property commonly known as 2918 Carlson Drive, which is also in the Oxbow Landing development. The purchase agreement is from Ascent Hospitality, LLC. Ascent is the same development group that constructed the 12.5 million Hampton Inn Hotel. And with the purchase of this property, they're now planning on building a Holiday Inn, Ex Holiday Inn Express next door to the Hampton Inn, which is a similar investment amount similar job creation. As part of the offer, and this was done through our RFP process when we publicly listed the property for bid, they offered um, more than 25,000 per acre than the asking price, which was by far the best offer we received on that site. Um, we're excited to bring this in front of you today. We think that with some of the things that we're talking about that we're bringing to Hammond, including and not limited to the the sports complex, which is something that we're, is a high priority on our list right now, uh, although there are several hotels in that area, we think another hotel will also be successful and will also generate tax dollars for the city of Hammond, which is important. So we're excited to uh, bring this agreement to you today, and we're hoping to get it approved. And I'll, if you have any questions, throw them at me. Not often you hear somebody willing to pay 25000 more than the um, asking price. Uh, the other offers that came in, and I, I don't have the list in front of me, I want to say they, when you put on RFP, you have to list the average price 
the average per acre price, so you, that has to be the minimum bid. I want to say that all the other offers use the average minimum bid as their offer. This is the only one where they offered more than the average. So you're correct. It sounds to me like um, you know this was an astute business person who knew what he wanted, yeah, and they really wanted. It. Yeah, so uh, didn't play around. You know. Well, they know the hotels in that area are on the uh, ninety percent. Um, uh, occupancy rate, so they're they're doing very well, and that's how he knows that another one will be just as successful. Mr. President, I move we approve uh, the agreement to purchase real estate. Uh, is there a commonly twenty commonly known as twenty nine eighteen Carlson Drive, Hammond, Indiana, four six three two three. Second. Motion and a second to the agreement to purchase real estate for Ascent Hospitality LLC at 2918 Carlson Drive. If there's no more discussion, then roll call. Soto Presley? Yes. Kesbridge? Yes. Aveja? Yes. Myrick? Yes. Hopbridge? Yes. Motion passes. Five yes. Thank you, Commissioners. Okay, uh, number 13, public comment. Anyone would like to come forward and speak? <coughs> this month is Black History Month, and I know <clears throat> the Redevelopment Office assists in planning that event. And normally the banner is usually put out in the foyer for the whole month of February, and I would like to see that happen again if possible. And additionally, uh, regarding the uh, report that Mr. Taylor made, <clears throat> once again, we're, we're hearing projections of jobs. And I mean, we've had this conversation before, but for whatever reason, we can never find out exactly the number of Hammond residents that actually got those jobs. And I would think between this commission and the city council, something, some kind of mechanism can be put together to actually find out, I mean, these are tax dollars being put to work. And I mean, they project these number of jobs, but we never know uh, how many Hammond residents actually, we know these companies bring in a number of people with them. We know that, that's a given. But when it comes to knowing exactly who from Hammond got these jobs, it's just always a mystery. And I mean, we were even told in caucus at one point that if you, if you uh, put pressure on the, these businesses for that number, they, they might not even come here. I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> Should be the other way around. These are tax dollars putting these people to work. And I think as a taxpayer, we should have that information. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. King. Commissioner, if I can add on, the Black History Program is this Thursday, and it is at City Hall um, on the first floor, and it's at 10 o'clock a.m. So I'm glad that Ms. King brought that up. That's um, I hope that we have a, uh, a we have a very exciting event. Although I don't have all the details, I know we're honoring um, some of the oldest married um, African American couples in the city of Hammond. So it should be uh, a lot of fun, and I hope you're able to come out and to what, attend that. What time did you say? Ten o'clock a.m. Okay, public comment is closed. Number 14. <coughs> Mr. President, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and second to adjourn. Can you signify by saying aye? Aye. 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 aye.